Hello, all you big, beautiful brains out there. Today, we're going to talk about meditation. Before we get started, take a minute to subscribe to Psy vs. Psy. Help out your friendly neighborhood psychologist while I tell you all about meditation and some of the things psychologists know about it. Meditation is a practice that's been used all over the world by different cultures and religions for thousands of years. But what can psychological science tell us about it? For starters, meditation is not just one thing. It's actually a big category of things. There are lots of different types of meditation, like concentrative meditation, mindfulness meditation, or transcendental meditation. And all of these different types differ on things like frequency, duration, inclusion of other practices like yoga, and even the ultimate goal of the meditation itself. So creating a singular proper operational definition for science would be difficult, if not next to impossible. For researchers, and for those of us trying to read and understand the research, that means we need to be clear on the way that meditation is being defined by the specific academic paper we're trying to read. And we need to be aware that what was impactful for one definition of meditation might not be generalizable to other types of meditation. Because of its association, with pre-scientific ancient religious and spiritual practices, sometimes meditation is associated with some feel-good pseudoscience that can be a real turnoff. Okay, story time. Meditation almost made me not want to be a psychologist at all. I had never seriously tried meditation until my very first psychology class and my instructor wanted the whole class to lie on the floor of our classroom in the dark and try to meditate. I'm not sure if it was my crippling social anxiety or extremely intense desire to not lay on the floor of a well-used public building, but instead, I just left. It's the only time I've ever walked out of a classroom, and it gave me really negative associations towards the field of psychology as a whole. Luckily, I gave psychology another shot later on and realized that not all psychologists are like that, and I learned to appreciate the science of psychology based on evidence. In the same way, while it isn't uncommon to run across meditation practices that bring in those non-scientific elements, there is a real science surrounding meditation, which can be practiced without those elements and can have real effects on the mind and body. So, on this channel, we've talked about some other states of consciousness, like sleep and hypnosis, and meditation is widely accepted to be a different state of consciousness as well. While meditating, the brain areas involved in attention are extremely active, as well as those that control the autonomic nervous system, which shows that meditators are paying more conscious attention to things like their breathing and their heart rate. There's also increased activity in the areas of our brain that determine the awareness of the space all around us. But that's in the short term. Long-term meditation practices might make even more impactful changes to our brain. This study is really heavily cited and states that with just eight weeks of regular meditation practices, there were anatomical changes in participants' brain matter and areas associated with learning and memory and emotional regulation, helping us learn better, remember more, and have more control over our own emotions. Typically, meditation in a therapy setting is designed to achieve a state of relaxed awareness. That makes it a useful tool in the therapist's toolbox for conditions that might lead to decreased awareness or heightened anxiety, like PTSD, OCD, or anxiety disorders, like social anxiety or phobias. What's important to remember is that meditation is just one tool that can be used, and that it's not a method of therapy within itself. For instance, a therapist might help a patient practice meditation to attempt to lower stress, but Without finding the cause of their stress, the therapist would only be managing symptoms and not getting to the source of the issue. 
If you want to know more about other therapy tools or different states of consciousness, make sure you subscribe to Psy vs. Psy so you can get all of our other videos and you can learn all about the science of psychology. Until next time, keep thinking, and I'll see y'all later. Bye! So, I am so glad this psychology thing worked out, but I'm still not going to lay on the floor of a public school building.